um, I counted before, and I'm now in Japan already for eight years, um, and I live in, a, in Osaka, um, but before I lived in Yokohama, and that's the new station of uh, station building of Osaka. And cities usually, if you have been to Japan, look uh, pretty much like this. So huge and lots of lights, and uh, yeah, um, I think Tokyo is yeah Tokyo is even bigger, but. Um, you have very high buildings. This is currently the highest building in Japan, just uh, opened a few months ago, and it's almost 300 meter, so it's the highest office building. Um, it's not a, there's a higher tower. And um, there's a new um, developed district in front of Osaka Station, which is called Grand Front Osaka, and it's a real vertical city, like you have parks in the uh, seventh floor or eighth floor, and I currently uh, work there in some, some shared office space. And um, on the bottom is shopping area, and at the top is office area. And um, when you look into details, it's very, very, so it's really, really huge. And um, I really recommend you to travel once to Japan because uh, that's a really good experience, also good mapping experience. Um, but when I, when I arrived, um, the map looked like this. And um, that was Tokyo, and it was about 2007. And I don't know, I just had a GPS then, and um, some other people also started. And um, we thought we will never finish that. Um, and I just want to say, I want to say, this is not the reason why I went to Japan, <laughs> but it's. <laughs> That there's no misunderstanding. Um, but we started with our first mapping party in Kamakura and we divided it by uh, four. And uh, there, um, there were 10 people, and also IKEA was there. Um, it was a very, very small community. But I started then mapping with my scooter, and I was driving around the roads, which are confusing and not straight. So it's not something you just connect nodes. Um, you really have to go along the streets no map box, aerial photos, and uh, from my balcony it looked like this. Um, and when you mapped it, it looked like this. So the style is, this is just a screenshot from yesterday, and it still looks like this, and that's not so good to promote to people um, and say, wow, this is open street map. So it's just uh, too thick, the, and the styling doesn't match so well. So you have very narrow streets. Um, that's where I live now in Osaka. And you have also traditional streets. Um, sometimes they're just enough for a small car. Um, what you often see that there are no sidewalks. A lot of other stuff, but no sidewalks. Um, and you have vertical cities. So this is not where you have a good connection with your GPS device. And you also have a problem to see this road from an aerial photo. Um, so mapping this is a real challenge. And that's, uh, somebody did that, so I think that was the right crossing. Um, if you do it wrong, then <laughs> yeah, routing won't work. Um, and then you have things like this here. Uh, there was no space uh, for the highway link, so they built it through the building. And if you look from a little bit more far away, there are also train lines beneath. Um, but you, what you usually don't see is street names. So everybody who visits me asks, which street do you live? And I say, yeah, yeah, there's no street name. Just in Kyoto, you have street names. Um, instead, you have uh, district maps, like here. And um, some are almost like uh, written, made by hand. And uh, they even write the owner or currently living person's name on the map. Um, sometimes parts of the address you can see on poles. I think it took me six years to understand that <laughs> there's actually a part of the address. <laughs> um, it's the blue sign. Um, and so I want to show you how, how a Japanese address looks like. Um, so in, in Europe, you usually have street addresses, and there are some schemas. I didn't know before. I looked up Wikipedia, um, European scheme, clockwise distance scheme. Um, but what if you have no street name? So you take, you have a, a collection of streets and you divide it into blocks. Could be, uh, doesn't need to be like this. 
And then in this small, smallest block, you just number the houses. And there's no rule how to number the houses. Some, some are clockwise, some are um, just by the time they were built. And um, yeah, and sometimes they're very nice, friendly and they put these maps. Um, that's probably a new, some area that was built at the same time, all houses. And so the development company um, put up a map. And usually um, the order is the opposite to what we are used to. So um, the Japanese addressing system is based on areas and subdivided from big to small. So the largest entity is, yeah, uh, there are four possibilities. And uh, there's Tokyo, that's one possibility. And um, there's a second one that is Hokkaido, uh, which is the second one. And then big, a few big cities um, uh, are named Metropolis. And then all the rest is prefecture. And because you write Japanese without spaces, you can only distinguish um, what is the prefecture by looking for these key characters, to or do or something. Um, and then prefectures are divided into counties or cities or cities. And um, then you have the cities and they are divided into areas, neighborhoods named cho. Or, or, and then if you have very big cities, you have uh, not only cho, you have the larger, larger ones which are called wards or ku. And then the blocks are numbered and at the lowest level are the buildings. And if you have large buildings, apartment houses, they often get a name. Um, very funny names sometimes. Uh, mine is Shademand Sh Izumi. Uh, I don't know, it, is it French or uh, I couldn't find out. Um, and then the writing is also difficult. Um, so we have diff there are different ways to write. Uh, the left is the uh, Japanese characters. Uh, the middle one would be translated to uh, Roman characters. And the right one would be how my parents write me a letter. Um, that's not my address, so I don't get this letter if you write me. Um, but the nice thing is that postmen in Japan are very uh, kind, and however you write it, it will arrive somehow. <laughs> so there, there are several ways, but usually you write the name at the end. And um, a big problem for me is usually to sign up for conferences. So, because <laughs> I have to make it work that later the, it looks correct. So I don't have a street name and city works, state works, but sometimes it's easy to do and sometimes it's more difficult. Um, there was a website called openaddresses.org and um, it was not possible to put in a Japanese address there. And for tagging, that's the nice thing on OpenStreetMap, it's very flexible. Um, but if you tag correctly in Japanese, um, you have to, for every name, um, you tend to make uh, four tags. Well, one is the English one for all foreigners traveling to Japan. Well, first you have the normal name tag and then you have an English one um, because we hope that we can produce a, English, Eng a map for English speakers. And then you have the Japanese name and then you have the romanization of the Japanese name and then you can still write the pronunciation in like a, a several uh, different alphabet called Kana, um, that is like an alphabet. So tagging is not so fun, <laughs> especially for me. And um, probably there should be developed some tools to make this more automatically. Um, but that's, that's not all. So even this sounds already like an exception, um, there's even an exception in, in Japan, um, which is Kyoto. And I, I looked, I searched a bit um, about other addressing systems. Uh, I don't know well about South Korea or Taiwan, but I think some of you have been in Venice, and in Venice are also the, um, the houses numbered, I think by the, just in the order they were built. And in Kyoto, um, um, there's a very interesting kind of address. Uh, the traditional address of Kyoto is describing the way how you get to that address. So they say, from the second crossing, go the next crossing right, and then up. So they have uh, different ways, so east and west and north. 
and they always describe the way to get somewhere. And um, I don't want to explain too much in detail because um, it would take too much time, but uh, a friend of mine, he made a geocoder for that address system, and um, he has a website with some explanation on geodos.com, and um, that's kind of a, it's a nice way to, to make address addresses, but of course it's not good for the Japanese post, so they're trying to formalize this. So here's an, an example, the, the tower of uh, some tower of Kyoto, and on the top would be the official address, and um, the second one is the traditional address. And the interesting thing is the people use the traditional, uh, still like the traditional address. So even government, or wh whoever wants to standardize this, um, both exist. And it's, I don't know in, in, if anybody um, adds um, traditional Kyoto addresses in OpenStreetMap, um, but there are always exceptions. So what, what I learned when I moved to Japan was some things I, I took as granted, I never thought it's wrong, or uh, it could be different somewhere else, is for sure somewhere different. Um, and the address is a good example, and um, like uh, already to define what highway, uh, what is a highway, it, it's very difficult to translate this to, to, to a local language. Um, but there are also things that just don't fit in the, if you make an editor like J Josen, um, if it wouldn't be so flexible, you couldn't put in a Japanese address. So um, I really uh, encourage everyone, um, if you, it's not so expensive as you think, but if you come to Japan, or if you have a question about Japan, just write to this email address and say hello. Um, there are not so many visitors, so I think somebody will respond and uh, I know that uh, uh, Tim was in Japan and they made a mapping party for him, so um, I think you will be welcome. Okay. Thank you very much. Um, questions? If I understand correctly, the Kyoto addressing scheme isn't even unique per location? It's unique in Japan, yeah. No, I mean, uh, one place can have different addresses depending on which uh, highway crossing you use to start your description? That's how they, I understood they have the... Some, they have some rules, so, it is, it is a un so they have some, some, um, tip, some roads they start with, and then they say go north or south, but I don't know exactly it's unique or not, but maybe the website would explain it, it's also in English. <laughs> yeah, so I don't know the details about the system, so. But I think other, there are some, in the world there are some uh, similar um, addressing systems, I, I heard. It's just a comment. Um, yes, I can confirm that I'm living in Central America and we all have, um, in all countries, <coughs> streets. It's just reference point based and, yeah, it doesn't have to be unique. So my, my question would be, is, is there a constant you see uh, in for cartography in, in Japan, so you have roads, they must be connected, okay? So um, is that the, the linking concept behind um, open street mapping in Japan? And uh, address is just a, a very hard complication. So what, what, what forms the community and how far is the community in mapping Japan? Um, how far? I think um the, the, there's a language barrier. So the first is you, you will not have many people reading the international lists. Um, so there must be somebody looking at it and, and translate uh, content. But I think in Japan, we are they're very well equipped with GPS devices and technology. So um, probably more GPS devices than mappers usually on a mapping party. And um, yeah, I think that language is, is a problem to, to actually if, if you say you would like to make, to, to meet, um, to make a meeting of people from different uh, areas, uh, 
yeah, uh, the communication is probably uh, the most difficult part. Mm -hmm. That they are incredible far in, 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 in navigation, in development of navigation systems, traffic information, though that is a leading country, isn't it? So there must be a lot of knowledge and, and technology, you said it already, but uh, the, the state of the map, how, how is it now? What do you say? It's there was large data import, so a lot of data was imported. Um, usually people tend to, so they like, it's, it's a ho like I think Germans also have open street map, it's a popular hobby. Mm -hmm. um, but it's it's quite quite a lot of work, so uh, not not yet completed. So no, not on that stage. Far, see far in Europe. away. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Uh, so my question is the following: What is the primary application of OpenStreetMap uh, in uh, Japan? Because, for example, in Russia, navigation software is very popular, and OpenStreetMap is widely used for car navigation. What about Japan? Um, I think it's hobby level still. So the, there are many alternatives, and of course, when you when you do a smartphone contract, you have all these applications already installed. They are free um, and free to free to use. <laughs> and um, at the moment, the hobby, there there is a big difference between um, metropolis metropolis and countryside. So in countryside, OpenStreetMap is at some areas already better. And then, then uh, other map makers, but in the in the city, even you map a lot, it's really a lot of information on a very dense place. And then when you when you see the default uh, map styling, it, it doesn't it's too uh, too big lines, for example, and uh, it's it's really hard to to make a nice style or rendering. And for the end user who sees the map. And that's the most important part. Who was the first? Did you try to make your own style for dense cities like you showed, uh, showed yeah, to us? I think the osm.jp site, they have um, some, they cache some tiles, but then on some zoom levels, they have their own styles, um, partially. Yeah. It, but but still, it's it's a problem to to how how you how you show like actually 3D cities on 2D. Um, there's a lot of information. Yeah. <laughs> sure. Well, how how would you give driving instructions if there's no street name? Um, th there's one thing that uh, junctions have names. For example, that's that's one thing. Junctions can have a name, and us. Uh, mapped sometimes, but I think landmark-based navigation is very common, and when I drive a car and have a navigation system, you usually get like 200 meters and then right. Um, big names have numbers, for example, or even a name. We still have a little bit of time because we then uh, get reassembled with the other group, so I will not start before three. So. One more question from my side. Do you, th you lived now for how many years in Japan? Eight years. Eight years. Is there a culture difference in the approach to uh, such a, uh, a thing like OpenStreetMap from uh, seeing, seeing it uh, as a community? Is social life so di is so different? And, and that, is that an, an, an another strong uh, influence on how such a thing like OpenStreetMap can grow and how it, it's found its place in society. Uh, what, what is your observation and your, how do you think about that from this philosophical and cultural aspect? Yeah, I don't know so well Germany because I, did, I, <laughs> I cannot compare, so I, I don't know. I think that um, the community is, is doing very well, so um, they do a lot of mapping parties, a lot of there's an OpenStreetMap Foundation in Japan established, mm -hmm. and they do a lot of publicity. Um, maybe the need is not so high, like compared to Russia, maybe. Um, so the, the pressure to, to have your own data. I mean, the, more than 100 million people live in Japan, so uh, 500 mappers, active mappers, is not so, uh, no. not so big. 
But there's a lot of data, actually. I think that the download of OpenStreetMap Japan is very big. Um, it's not so accurate, probably, still. Is there a license issue if you, if you collect data from elsewhere? Is it a strict license regime in, by legislation, Japanese? No, government actually um, gives a, a lot of data for import. So mm -hmm. the quality is, yeah, it's better than nothing. <laughs> Mm -hmm. um, it's not perfect. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. Okay. Uh, there's one more question. Then we have to close. No, no. You, 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 okay. No question. Okay. <laughs> Just so. Thank you again, Daniel and. <laughs> Your own. <laughs>